this is Alan Nassa, and I'd like to share with you another tutorial of an interesting case that I recently did, which involved dystrophic calcification of an anterior tooth. This tooth number 10 was referred to me after my referring dentist attempted to perform root canal therapy, but found the, uh, the canal calcified. So wisely, treatment was uh, terminated before any procedural errors had occurred, and the patient was then referred for microsurgical access and exploration using a microscope. This was done because a post space was required for proper restoration of the tooth. Now there is significant uh, calcification from this angle as you can see, but uh, there is a hint of the canal remaining deeper in the root. The goal obviously is to make the most conservative axis given the tapering dimension of the root while minimizing the possibility of procedural errors such as perforation. Now the most common uh, kind of perforation in these such cases is uh, basically a buccal perforation and this is because of a lack of compensation for the lingual orientation of the root. An approximal perforation is also possible if a mesial tilting of the tooth is present that is not compensated by the, uh, by the clinician during the procedure. A very important strategic decision about accessing such teeth is to have proper rubber dam isolation. In such cases, proper isolation is not a single tooth isolation with an anterior clamp as this results in a loss of spatial orientation relative to the adjacent teeth. Correct isolation in such cases is multiple tooth isolation that allows uh, for constant visualization and course correction based on monitoring the position of the uh, handpiece, uh, the burr, and the orientation uh, relative to the long axis of adjacent teeth. Now I generally uh, isolate such teeth with a split dam technique as it uh, provides efficiency while exposing a good portion of the, uh, of the gingiva along with the adjacent teeth and allows visualization of, the, uh, of a larger portion of the field. Now this is a uh, temporary measure because once uh, the canal is found, it's very important to uh, change the isolation from a split dam to um, either a single uh, tooth isolation or the addition of uh, some of the other techniques that we have discussed in previous tutorials by providing isolation of the gingiva because the gingiva and all the areas have to be covered for proper isolation during the root canal. Basically, after removal of the provisional and using a surgical length, the number one round burr, uh, followed by a smaller Mueller burr, and finally a size uh, E14D uh, NSK ultrasonic tip, I work my way down the canal and while paying specific attention to the orientation and direction of the adjacent teeth. During the exploration down the canal, I use a technique that I learned from uh, my friend Dr. Alex Fleury, uh, who practices in Dallas and teaches at Baylor University. And uh, this is a technique that helps you monitor your progress down the canal. And in the past, people have used uh, burrs and other things to put in uh, to, to, to fix in place with utility wax in order to get the orientation as we move down the canal. Uh, the technique that Dr. Fleury um, described um, is a quite a simple one. Uh, basically, a dab of the BC sealer, the biceramic sealer that's pre, uh, that comes pre-syringed um, in a syringe, um, can be efficiently applied inside the canal in order to expose uh, the radiograph and show our uh, direction and orientation of the drilling. And the sealer is then easily washed out by using the ultrasonic tip uh, with water for a mere three seconds. Now, the application of the sealer is easy because the material is already in the syringe and uh, you can just inject it into the canal. Using this technique and checking multiple times while progressing down the canal, the canal was finally located at about the mid uh, root level. Unfortunately, a defective uh, rusted number 17 uh, uh, flexophile uh, failed immediately after insertion uh, in the canal and doing a mere uh, watch winding motion. The failure was at the mid-shank level and it was later on determined to be due to uh, rust in this particular area of the file. Uh, 